And I'm glad each and every one of you are here. Thank you for coming, boys and girls, God's, God's children. Thank you. I want to welcome everyone that's on live stream this morning, too. You're tuning into South Valley Baptist Church. Welcome. I thank God for all the things you've done for us. And I want to thank all the hard hardworking people in America for Labor Day tomorrow. Thank you for what they do in keeping America going. I just want to thank God too, because He's the one that gets all the glory. Yeah. Yep, because if it wasn't for Him, who knows where we'd be? Um, but Jesus sacrificed himself on the cross for us to be able to spend eternity with him when we accept him as our personal savior. This morning I'm going to talk about the Lord's Supper since we're going to have it in a few minutes after we talk a little bit. But during that time, during the Lord's Supper when the, when Jesus was getting ready, again prepared it's hard to imagine hard to imagine how he would have felt or what he felt because he because he had good news to share with the disciples and then also he had bad news to, to share bad news was was one of them is going to betray him I don't see how somebody can can enjoy a meal with the family when they have to have when they tell them the bad news. But you know what? Jesus did it for us to die on the cross for us. He spent I uh, spent that time with with all of his twelve disciples. He got them together. I'm sure they shared shared stories, and they laughed. Had a good time. But things had to be done. If Jesus was following what, what his father was telling him to do. And and I thank God for dying on the cross for us and for raising up. Because someday all of us, the ones that are saved, are going to spend eternity with him. Working for Jesus, working for God, is, is not just because, you know, it's for a reason. We believe and trust in him and have faith in him. But I'll be in Matthew chapter 26, verse 17 through, through 30. You know, during the Lord's Supper, we remember Jesus' death for us as we appreciate the, the culmination of his history of his return. See, because he is returning. He tells us so. In his word, he tells us that he's coming back for us. And I know he will. Just before Jesus was crucified, he shared, he shared the Passover with his disciple, the meal. And tell them, tell them that he told them that I will drink of this fruit of vine from, from now on. I will, I will not drink of this fruit of vine from now on until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. That's what he told them. I wonder what the disciple was thinking. I wonder what he's talking about, they were probably thinking. But just like any family gets together, you know, there's good times. You know, they talk about a lot of good stuff. They talk about stories. 
And I'm sure these men were doing that too. Jesus in the middle of them. Wow, how awesome is that, you know? He's also in the middle of us right now today. He's here with us. The Lord's table once <coughs> unites every every Christian. You know, it unites us, makes us stronger. Can't think enough for what Christ did for us on the cross, because He loved us so much that He He did it, and He raised up. He to raise them up. Therefore, he's alive today, yesterday, and tomorrow, and forever. And one day, in a scene of reunion and joy, the ones who belong to Christ, we will all gather together in a big, long table and have a Lord's Supper. What are you going to ask to be served to you? What are you going to eat? Whatever God's got, you all right? Whatever God's got to, to give us, I know it's going to be wonderful. And Paul would be so excited looking around so much. Say, wow, look at that thing over there. Look over there. See, there's something good to look forward to. It's not just because we come to church. It's for a reason. It's to worship God. And God will take care of us. He takes care of his own. In the meantime, we still have a lot of work to do. To do God's work. We try to give the people a chance to get saved. As long as we spread the word to them. They have a choice. But here in chapter, tw <clears throat> excuse me, 26, verse 17, we'll start off. Thank you, Lord. Now the first day of the feast of the unleavened bread, the disciple came to Jesus, saying unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare for those these to eat the Passover? And he said, Go into the city to, to such a man, and say unto him, The master said, My time is at hand, and I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. Dear Lord, I thank you this morning for bringing each and every one of us here to come here to worship you, to praise you, to give you all the glory, Lord. Thank you for this message this morning. Help us to take it during the week and every day, Father, and put you first in our lives. Protect the rest of the family members wherever they're at and the ones that are on large live stream, Lord, to look after them and their families. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. The Passover, it took place. It, took, uh, it only took place one night you had that meal. But the other, the other event, the Unleavened Festival, took a whole week. Jesus took time. He spent time with his disciples at the Passover, at the Lord's Supper. It's where they can gather together and probably talk and laugh and just had a good time. There were thousands of people that came to Jerusalem for the festival. And they came from they came from all over the place. Like here, Jesus was telling them, you go to such and such a man's house. And that's where he'll have his Passover, he said. They didn't question Jesus, you know, which man? Who are you talking about? But you know what? God works in wonderful ways. You know, he, he, makes, he makes things happen according to his will. 
And he'll do the same thing for us. If we want something or need something, according to his will, he will make a way. And this man, he offered his house for Jesus and his disciples to have a meal there, the Lord's Supper. That will be wonderful, you know, if if the Lord would say, hey, boy, I want to use your house tonight. We're going we're gonna to have a Lord's Supper there. Yeah, come on in. Can I join you? You know, <laughs> yeah, that'd be great, huh? But there was a reason why all this is going on. There were some things that, that the Lord wanted to tell his disciples. Number 19. And the disciples did as, did as Jesus had appointed them. And they made ready the Passover. And now when the even was come, he sat down with the twelve. So the disciples went to his house and he got everything all ready, everything all set up, ready to go. Now the sun was going down. It was evening time. It was time to eat. It was time to get together. And get together and spend time with Jesus. I know the disciples were, were feeling good about it. You know, they were happy because they're all together. Probably tell the stories of, where, of all the places that they've been. And what they have done. But while they were eating, number 21... And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. Man. You think the mood in that, uh, uh, in that supper changed right away? One time they were all happy and talking. Now Jesus is telling them, you know, well, one of you is going to betray me. Probably thought, what? What is he talking about? But Jesus knew ahead of time what was coming. That tells me that he knows everything what's ahead of us. Because he's the one that's in charge. One, uh, where it says, one shall betray me. This statement indicates that the Lord, the Lord knows everything. Because he knows already, and and he uh, he repeatedly unveiled what was what was going to take place, and what was going to happen. It's it's hard it, uh, it's hard to eat and enjoy your meal. And you're thinking about, wow, I wonder who it is, or wonder what's going on. But, you know, it's, it's got to be done. It's got it's to take place. For the unsaved one, that's what, that's what they're going to meet someday. But Jesus tells them, I don't know you. You have to go down into the lake of fire. Because here, Jesus uh, is going to talk about the Son of Man goeth where, where it is written. But the one that, that, that disobeys him or betrays him, it's better that he, he, he wasn't born. So in other words, the unsaved one, for them, if they reject Christ, it's better for them that they don't, they're not born because they're going to spend eternity in a place called hell. It's a place where the heat doesn't turn down. It's a place where the people don't die forever. That's why we need, need to try to reach the lost people, try to tell them about Christ. 
so that they can have a chance, so that they can have a chair at the supper when we all get together in heaven. How awesome is that going to be? Huh? It's going to be good. I know it is. It's going to be wonderful. Thank you, Lord. In verse 22, And they were ex exceeding sorrowful and began every one of them to say unto the Lord, Is it I? And he said unto, and he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. You know what? The Lord knows everything. He knew, he knew already who was going to betray him. And that's, That's a bad place to be if, uh, if you reject reject Jesus when you stand before before the before judgment day. It's not good. And number twenty four, the Son of Man who goeth as it is written of him. But woe unto the man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been been born. Then Judas, was, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? And he said unto him, Thou hast said it. You know, he told him. And Judas asked him, Hey, is it me? You know? And Jesus said, Well, yeah, you said it. You know, it's you, buddy. And you're the one. Wow, you know it's it's the Lord's Supper because of uh, commemorance of Passover, the meal Jesus ate with his with his disciple. That uh, that actually happened. It is communion because 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 through it we we commune with Christ. And with other believers, there's a penalty if we don't if we don't pray before before we do the communion. If we just take it just because, or if there's a lot of things that are in our mind, a lot of things that we have done, and then ask for forgiveness, if there's a penalty for it. Once we do our Lord's Supper, we will have a chance to, to pray to the Lord. As we eat and drink, we should be quietly reflective. As we, we, should, we should be, you know, you know, as we think about what Christ did for us on the cross, of what, uh, what happened here, the Lord's Supper, the table, A good time to bad time to eternity. But these things had to take place. Because in verse 24, the Son of Man goeth as it is written, written of him. You know, he's got to do what, what the Bible says or, or what was put before him. So, so if we know any relatives or any friends that's not saved this morning, you know, now is a good time to try to reach out to them to make sure that they're on the right track. It's, it's our job, it's our duty to do that. Number 26, and as the Lord, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciple and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink of ye, ye all of it. Drink ye all of it. And that's because, that's for, 
he, what Jesus did for us on the cross. They hung him on the cross and they shoved a, with a thorn or crown in his head. He stabbed him in his side. But he did that willingly for us so that we can inherit eternity with him if we accept Christ as our personal Savior. There again, it's so important that we try to reach the unsaved people so that they can have a chance to what's going to take place. Because once we die, see, that's the beginning for eternity. It means forever. It's the things that are going to happen forever. And if we're right with Christ, we're going to spend eternity with him in heaven. So while we're still walking on this earth, let's try to make the best of it for Christ. Because we want to do it for him, not for ourselves. Number 28, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for, for many for the remission, remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the wine until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. See that, see, that includes all of us. You know, he's not going to drink out of that again until we're all together again. You know, how awesome is that, you know? All together. The, the old covenant, before, before Jesus was here, the people under the old covenant the ones who live the ones who lived before Christ, they could approach only God through a priest and by an animal sacrifice. That was the only way they can do it. But Jesus gave his life on the cross for us. So now we can communicate with him by praying or by talking to him one on one rather than having to go through through a priest or, or sacrifice an animal. If we were still in the Old Testament today, there'd be a herd of animals right here waiting to be sacrificed when you talk to the priest. But you know what? I thank God for what he did for us. We don't have to do that no more. He died on a cross for us, but you know what? He raised him up in three days later. He got him up. Therefore, he's still alive today and tomorrow and forever. You know, how good is that? You know, you can't go wrong when you accept Christ as your personal Savior. You just got to uh, obey his commandments and be a good steward read the Bible, do, uh, do the work he wants you to do, not just half-heartedly, not just half of a sacrifice like a lame animal, I mean, something that's not worth nothing. But God wants the best from us, to give him the best, to give him the best of our time. You could be a Sunday school teacher, nursery, Take care of the little ones. Or wherever, wherever you're needed in the church, just say, how can I help? Don't say, give me. Give me this, give me that. But how can I help? And each and every one of us has a job that, uh, uh, that Christ has given us. Let's put it to use. Number 30. And when they had sung a, a sung a hymn, they went out into the out into the Mount of Olives. They went up there to go pray after they had eaten. After uh, after he told about the bad news, who was going to betray him? In other words, there's a lot of people that's going to betray Christ when the time comes. 
There won't be no excuses. So today, while we're still alive, while we're still here, is a good chance, a good time, good time to tell people about Christ. That way, it's up to them and to the Lord to make that right decision. But if they don't make that right decision, like it says in verse 24, Woe unto the man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had not had been good for that man if he had not been born. Man, that's, that, uh, you, uh, you, that, is, that is real scary to me. You know, he says, you know what? It's just better that you weren't, you weren't even born if you rejected me. But in John 14, verse 6, he, he, Jesus gives everybody a chance because he says, nobody comes unto the Father but by me. He says, he tells us that. Me, uh, saying that we accept him as our personal Savior. If Jesus Christ would be saved. And once we're saved, he's going to keep us in his hands. And when we get to heaven, we will see the marks that he left on his, his, hands, his, his hands and his feet for us. What they did to him when he was on this earth. We will be able to see that. See, that's our signature on there. Because he did it for us. And he, did, he, he did it for us Willingly. He wasn't forced. That's why we need to remember Christ every day. And on the Lord's Supper too. Not just because of the Lord's Supper, but because he's our God. He's our Father. He's, he's everything to us. And again, yeah, Jesus uh, uh, assured his disciples of a victory over death and their future their future with him. That goes for us too. You know, he conquered death for us. And sin. But when this happened, you know, the next few hours would would bring would bring sadness. But soon they would experience the power of the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, because Jesus said he was going to send the Holy Spirit down when he went home. And that's with us even today, even right now, that's with us. Oh, can you stop and just think about that? You know, it's, imagine that, you know. One day, we will all be together in God's kingdom to sit at the table with him, with everybody. With our loved ones, the ones that were saved before us, that went before, they'll be there. And us too, the ones that are going to be saved sooner or later. But God is in control. He will take care of his kids, which is us. But I just wanted to point this out where what Jesus, what Jesus had to go through when he came to the Lord's Supper. I'm sure he was happy to be with his, with his disciples. But yet he was sad because he had to tell them about the bad news. One of them was going to betray them. I can't imagine going to a dinner with those things on my mind. But Jesus did it. He did it for us. Therefore, let's not forget what he has done for all of us. Let's take pride and take joy uh, in it because it's real. It's not just because. 
if everybody would stand with me, uh, I'll close in prayer. And then we'll go into the Lord's Supper afterwards. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you this morning, Lord. Dear Jesus, I thank you for what you've done for us, for dying on a cross for us, and for raising up again, Lord. I thank you for the Lord's, the Lord's Supper, to where we get to do it, to remember you, of Lord, on all the things you've done for us. Protect us the rest of the week. Bring us back here safely. And also for the ones that are on live stream, Lord, I pray for them too. I pray, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.